You know what's so crazy? That's a great point. It could possibly be that, but I don't want to say for sure that that's what the punchline is. But I do know that the company drivers used to get yelled at. Um, they were micromanaged. They were viciously spoken to, almost as bad as KLLM. And I say that because I actually worked for KLLM. Their dispatches are horrible, okay? Um, What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. You wanted to be in the game, right? Now you're in the game. All right, we got C.C. Trucker in the building. <laughs> So let's uh, let's 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 hear a little bit about yourself. Like you know, your your phone okay, so tag you from the oven. I got you. yeah, your phone tag you from uh from New York. But what you was doing before trucking? Which what, what you was be doing before trucking? All right, so I was a healthcare manager. I was in the healthcare field. Um, I had got my degree in healthcare management in 2016. My uh, bachelor's. So I was doing that for a couple of years, and then I realized I wasn't making enough money. And, you know, the cost of living in New York is, like, really, really high. Now, you so stay, you, myself, you in like, New York like, State or New York City? Brooklyn, New York. So you in New York State? I'm in the five fold. Oh, you, oh, you down in the, oh, you in New York City. City. You in the boroughs. You in the. I'm in the heart of. I'm in the heart of the ghetto, like where it all takes place Woo! in East New York, Brooklyn. Where it all takes place. Brooklyn yes. in the house. Rest <laughs> in peace, Biggie. We stay on the mother after news, okay? Damn it, man. <laughs> so, so. But I'm so, not, I'm not, I'm not representing that lifestyle. I'm just saying I'm right. You, a, you're a product from, of that environment. Right. You, you're from, yeah. uh, so, so from medical to being a trucker because. Being a trucker in New York is kind of hard, in my opinion. That's why I don't never go up in the boroughs. I never go up into New York. None of like that. You being from well, New even York. I'm from New York. I didn't start. I didn't start as a trucker in New York. I started at Prime. You feel what I'm saying? So I got on a bus and took my bus to Prime. Oh, okay, okay. But what made you get? But from New York. You know, down in the boroughs, what what made you you know what made you transition from from the healthcare field to to trucking? Like, I don't see that from a person. Well, from do you want to know? Like, it's a weird it's a weird way I started um, because I'm kind of one of those people that I just kind of read the universe. So I was like, okay, what can I do to make more money? And it was probably like maybe within that week. One of my uncle's statements came to my address, right? So he told me to open it because he wanted me to read off whatever. And it was like, he had like a lot of money. It was like $75,000 or whatever in his account. Okay, so hot coffee? It's hot coffee. Okay, room for cream? Totally leave room for cream. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice? This is my voice. And I'm like, yo, what do you do for a living? And he was an ex-con. So okay. I'm like, yo, what, what, what's going on? How you making all this money? How's an ex-con so getting this time, kind of money? Exactly. Like, I, was, I had to reevaluate my life. Like, what, wait, wait a minute. What am I doing wrong? You feel what I'm saying? So he told me he was working as a trucker in the oil field. And I had no clue of what was what. So he kind of broke it down. And then it just piqued my interest ever since. You feel what I'm saying? So then um, I started looking at stuff online because I really wasn't making a whole lot back in 2018, uh, 2017. I was like um, making like, you know, barely pushing 45K, like almost. And I know you're probably saying, well, that's decent. But when you got college debt and, you know, it just wasn't and enough. Living, I just and living like, in New York. Yeah, that that all adds yeah, up. Yeah, I just you, felt like the American dream was a big fat lie. You you have you have any kids? Yes, I have two children. Yeah, so combine combine that with your your college debt and living in and and the cost of living in New York. Right. Yeah, forty five k don't last. Don't don't go that far. <laughs> exactly. So, Prime was the main company that stood out when I was 
research and it kept popping up, popping up. And then they just like sent me an email. I mean, it was like they were really trying to get me to come down. So I called my kid's father and I said, hey, we weren't together. You know, we had broken up, but we were friends. I said, what do you think about me doing truck driving? He thought I lost my mind. He was like, what? Then I was like even trying to push it to him. We should do team because he was working at the airport. He wasn't happy. And I was like, let's do team. And he's like, you lost your mind. So I still pondered on the, um, you still there? Hello? Oh, oh, this is real quiet. <laughs> he still, I still pondered on the thought of, do I really want to do it? And then as I just kept talking to myself, basically I talked myself into it. And then within three weeks, I was on the Greyhound bus to Missouri. Greyhound. So that See, that's... Back in those days, they, they didn't put you in a rental car. They put you in a Greyhound. <laughs> Prime and the rest of these and, and the rest of these uh bit trucking companies, you guys, you you bit trucking companies, y'all, y'all show sure know the cheap way to doing things, man. I mean, Greyhound from New York to Missouri. Yeah, I think it's Springfield, Missouri. Uh -huh. We looking at about a couple of days on the bus. Yeah. How was yep. Yep. Well, it this is hard. this is pre this is pre pandemic too, right? Yeah, that was like uh, late twenty seventeen. Okay, so how was the how was the bus ride down there from from New York <laughs> to Springfield, I Missouri? Like a couple of fist fights. It was bad. It was bad. I almost had to fight a couple people. I mean, I just ain't used to people just being up on me like that. I mean, I know I live in New York, but in New York we do require some level of space. Don't come up on me. You feel what I'm saying? But in the bus, you can't tell somebody, can you stop leaning on me? Can you stop breathing on me? Can you stop snoring? You can't do that on a Greyhound or you're going to end up in a fight. But, yeah, it, I made it. You know, I made it to Missouri. Jesus. So once Greyhound. I started my. Wait, I, I want to know what was <laughs> I, I want to know what was some of the camaraderie on the bus. I mean, you you was on the bus for like two days, like literally, um, you know, was stopovers. How many stopovers that is from from New York to to Springfield, Missouri? Oh my God, I can't even remember. I just remember it was long and horrible because I didn't, I couldn't bring food. Um, I do remember a guy buying me a soda, and me and him were just chit chatting. I don't really remember anything that stood out as far as memorable on that bus, other than just one. One the one the one guy that stood out was this big fat guy. He decided to take the seat next to me, and he was kind of pressing on my leg a little bit. And I really wanted to hit him because I, I, in a way, I felt like he was doing it on purpose because he thought I wasn't going to say nothing. But other than that, I didn't re no, meet anyone really memorable on that bus like that. I just remember wanting to hurry up and get off. Was there any other uh, potentials on that same bus? That uh, that you that that went to prime with that you? went to prime. Yes. No, there was another guy that was going to a different trucking school. I don't. I think it was Swift, if I can remember. But it wasn't anyone that I met from prime. And to be quite honest with you, at that time, I was embarrassed to be a trucker. I ain't gonna front because I had a preconceived notion of what being a trucker was like. Well, you you wasn't a trucker <laughs> yet. You you was a potential. What, yeah. so, but you, right. you did your you did your homework with Prime and you knew that what well, everything you, you found right. out from Prime, you wanted to go to Prime. Now you went to Prime to get yeah. your CDLs as well as to go drive for yeah. them as well. Yes, they did everything for me. Okay. I came there with just a regular mm -hmm. Okay, so so we're down at Prime. You know, we're gonna fast track it. So we're we're down at Prime. You get down there, you try FETA. How was your experience with the whole getting your license part and going out with a trainer? And how you know, after you know, you got your license and everything. How was that whole experience? So prime, I would say, is kinda of like going to college. You're gonna get in a dorm, you're gonna meet people, you're gonna have your clique, you're gonna have your friends. So it felt like I was in a high school mentality, but in a college setting. So the people there were high school mentality with a college setting. This is how I feel about this Trucker Brown debacle is that we're in a high school mentality in a, a college setting. So YouTube is the college setting where not, they not, make sure you don't yet. do too much. Not, like not, not yet. We're not there yet. 
We're, we're not there yet. We're, yeah, we're still so at prime. To, drink the coffee. It'll make you feel better. Compare it, but okay. <laughs> Stay on topic. I got it. So in prime, um, I made friends and I wasn't, I wasn't like put with a male trainer right away and they couldn't find any female trainers. So they put me in what's called the school. I was in a night school. So I woke up from, I believe it was 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. every night. We drove on the yard. We drove around the immediate town. So that was considered my first PNT, I think they called it. And then you go on the real road with the train. Right. So while we was in class, I would have to sit in this little uh, RV type RV type thing. And what is it called? Like a mobile, like a mobile RV type thing. We would sit in there. Mind you, this is wintertime. I, I didn't know Missouri can get so cold, but it was really, really cold. Um, and we had to sit in this little tent with a little space heater. And it was like about maybe eight girls and maybe like two guys. And we would all take turns, like two of us at a time, on the yard. The yard was really, really big. And then we would go out on, on the road. <clears throat> During that time, this is what, 2017, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how many how many of you guys was in the class versus how many guys that can, uh, that actually got their CDLs, including yourself? All right. So I'm gonna just I'm not sure the question you're trying to say exactly, but this is how it goes. You get off the bus, you know, they feed you or whatever for the night, and then you go into this huge auditorium type situation. It's a little different than the average um, trucking place or whatever that I ever been to. You go into this huge auditorium type stuff, and then they're going to process you, like, by groups. So it's going to be, like, over hundreds of people there. Does that make sense? So that's the initial, initial, initial process, and that's to get to see who needs a DOT, who, you know, who needs this, who needs that. I don't remember the exact um, setup, but I know you got to go in a room. It's like so many different rooms. It's very, very overwhelming the first week. Like you tired. They make you wake up mad early and then you go to your breakfast. And then I felt like I was in the military all over again. It's like when you first go to boot camp. But it's set up that same. I think it's that, that it's kind of like to break you so that you can get into the formation type situation so that you're not. Prime is very, very strict. So the first week, it was all about passing your drug test. Nobody was doing the buffoonery. Everybody was just serious about passing. I seen people getting turned down and crying and trying to figure out how they're going to get back on the bus. It was very emotional. That, that, that whole week was weird. But anyway, I got past it. I don't do drugs. My only fear was that my second job wasn't going to answer because, you know, I had quit. So I didn't know if they were going to answer, but they finally did. So they had me a little bit biting my nails as if, because if you don't, if they don't, if everything on your application don't match up, they don't hire you. They find every little thing to say that they're not going to hire you. But once you make it past the first initial stuff, then you get placed in the classroom. That's when the real stuff begins. Hi, um, my name is Peter Parker, and I would like a coffee, please. Okay, no problem, Peter Parker. Oh, you got your CDL. Um, but instead yeah. of going company, <clears throat> like, you know, like, you know, just, you know, going company, you decided to go lease right out the gate. Like, what? What, 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 uh, what inspired well, you to go lease right out the gate? Well, I've always been one of those people that ask a lot of questions. I'm not afraid of people and I'm not shy. So when I would see other drivers, like I, I made a lot of friends there, right? So some people was prior prime, prior prime lease um, operators. Some people were prior company. And I met more disgruntled company drivers than the lease drivers. So that gave me a one up for the, for the lease. So you know how you're comparing from pros and cons and stuff like that, right? Another thing that bothered me was <laughs> Another thing that bothered me was I would see the prime company drivers getting flipped a bird because they trucks is too goddamn slow. It was like 62. Some of them was like 58. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? So I was like, y'all not going to be running me off the highway. 
That was one of the things I put in my mind, right? So then when I got on my trainer's truck, he was a, a lease. And he used to be flying down the highway because his truck was um, 68. So that kind of impressed me. Then when he showed me his uh, settlement check, and I like the fact when the dispatchers will call him, they'll be like, do you want the load? Or, you know, like they gave him options. And then the load amount will come directly on the car com. Like you knew how much you was going to get. It wasn't no like, time is pretty straight up front with what you're going to get for your load and all that stuff. There's no like finagling and stuff like that. And then they kept him moving. It wasn't like, they wasn't game playing with him. You know, how some people say, um, if the recruiter don't like you, not the recruiter, if the dispatcher don't like you, they're going to mess up your loads and stuff like that. I didn't see none of the lease drivers there complain about any of that. So that kind of gave me incentive to say, okay, I feel like I could have a good relationship. So then I found out that the dispatcher that I was going to get was going to be the same dispatcher that my trainer had. And me and her was cool. So I was like, okay, that's another, another pro for me. Then they said, you can customize the truck any way you want. So I took my, I wanted to take, I wanted to take the, the passenger chair out and put a full size refrigerator. So all of that I took into consideration. I didn't mind being out for six, four to six weeks at a time. Um, here's where it went funny for me. I was making good money. Like I ain't never seen that much money in one week. I made one check was 3,500. Um, and it wasn't no, like, you know how some companies you make mo- money only off your bonus. It was, that was the actual money I made week for running. Let me, so let me, let like, me stop. You. Let me stop you right <laughs> there. Let me ask you this about, about prime, because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm hearing, uh, consistencies with every other driver that I talked to that decided to go with prime and go straight leasing right out the gate. Is is Prime like trying to like lightweight force you guys to go leasing by by giving crappy trucks to their company drivers and and treating their company drivers just 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 crappy so they can force you guys to go lease? You know what's so crazy? That's a great point. It could possibly be that, but I don't want to say for sure that that's what the punchline is. But I do know that the company drivers used to get yelled at. Um, they were micromanaged. They were viciously spoken to, almost as bad as KLLM. And I say that because I actually worked for KLLM. Their dispatchers are horrible, okay? Um, I actually used to speak to guys that worked for Prime as a company driver, and they weren't really treated good. So... I don't know if that was the reason, you feel what I'm saying? But since I never went company, I just wouldn't be able to speak on that experience. I could only go by what I was told. Yeah, because I'm I'm but hearing I'm hearing that from I'm hearing that from a lot of drivers that I talked to that that started Prime as a company driver, but it was a lot of it was a lot of red tape, it was a lot of micromanagement. Yeah. It was a lot of you can't right. do this, you can't do that, and your truck was crappy and your truck was slow. But then their lease drivers is like, ah! like y'all can, like y'all can, <laughs> y'all can, y'all can, uh, y'all can modify your trucks. Y'all can get, uh, y'all can get the uh, little stickers or whatever y'all want on your trucks. Your trucks is governed at at seventy, if not sixty five. You're you, you you able to bring your kid on the truck and you able to do this that and the third as a lease driver like why why don't they just go in and just say yo let's just change up our whole <laughs> our 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 whole culture over there and just make it prime leasing instead of just prime company drivers. Um, you you got a great point. I've never really looked at it from that perspective because I was brand new to trucking all together. You feel what I'm saying? So back then, what I know now, I don't know. I didn't know back then. This is when ELDs was first on the map. It was now trying to implement that into the truck. It was a lot of switching up. I was on a manual at the time. Um, it was just different. Trucking was different back then. But I didn't stay in it. I left. Put that coffee down. 
because yeah, um, my boyfriend, he's a he's a super trucker, so he owns his truck or whatever. Yeah, I play with him like that. So his truck is eighty. I probably got it wrong, but I think it's an eighty-nine Peterbilt long nose or whatever. So I have a company truck. I have the short nose Peterbilt. It's a company truck, but it, it's been given this weird odor, right? Like boiled egg. And it's not from the inside of the truck. It's like when I come out the truck by the step. And he was like, oh, that's the battery. I took it to the terminal, but it's not my terminal. It's Heartland. You know Heartland Express? So they merged with my company called Smith Transport. So now Tr- Smith Transport be making us go to their terminals. So the guy was like, oh, your truck has the computer, um, the, the old diesel APU, our trucks have the, the electrical APU, so he act like he didn't really know what to do. But then he was like, your battery looked fine, but I'm I'm still smelling the odor, and the APU still keeps shutting off. So I'd rather go to a Smith terminal to see what the hell wrong with my truck. But that's why I asked you if you know anything about trucks, because I was ah, like, man, I, 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 don't know I, I stay away. Mm-mm. All right. Mm-mm. That's I why I keep the t- death unit that's actually. Yeah, that's why I tell my I tell my vet I tell my veterans, my old school drivers, I'll be like, yeah, I'm staying away from that, bro. They pay me to drive, not to work on their yeah. trucks. Now, if <laughs> if I want to go to diesel mechanic school, then yeah, 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 that would have been different. Yeah, would have been different. You you said in the video that uh, that Prime had some issues with some other drivers that kind of like took them to court and you oh yeah you was uh you being the lease driver and everything you 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 came up on that so what what happened with that i really don't know why they were being sued but it had to do with their training program they sent us letters um you ever heard of like a a, what do you call that a class action lawsuit where it's like a bunch of people complained and then they law okay so that's what happened to prime i don't know <clears throat> so i got an email i thought it was spam and it said prime is being sued you can look it up it's actually on the google like the details of why they were being sued um but it said something about the training that it wasn't um uh, like don't quote me but i think it said something pertaining to the fact that students were having to be treated like if they already had the CDL and were required to do things that wasn't, you know, I guess legal. I don't know, but they basically ended up paying me, but it had nothing to do with my contract per se, but I ended up getting money. They sent me a, ch- a nice check. Okay. Like so was the, nine months after. So, so was that, that wasn't because of you being a, a lease driver. That was, that had something to do with, with, with your training, getting your CDLs, right? I guess, yeah, but I was trying to say that, you know, they tried to screw me and end up screwing their company, end up getting screwed, basically screwed. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. All right, so as a lease driver... So then when I went back to go work for them, they never mentioned anything about the lease. Hmm. All right, but... Like, as, I was going to try to get rehired. But as a lease driver... Uh, which, which, now when you lease the truck, did you have the, did you have the options of different trucks? I, I know they were saying, uh, for the company drivers, they had the options of, of like a full condo size sleeper and, uh, a half sleeper or something like that. But that's, that has something to do with the amount that they was making too. Right. So I think it was. One, if you choose one, you was making like, I'm just ballparking here. So you make 60 cent with one and 45 cent with the other. Did did they offer that? Did they offer something like that to you when when you was leasing as far as getting the trust go? Um, I knew I wasn't going to take no small truck. So I knew there was a guy that got, um, he was in orientation with me at the same time. I knew he took a half sleeper because he wanted to run northeast and run the northeast run used to pay more. So he had what's called the light sleeper and it, the bed was basically right behind the chair. It was no like um, cabinet. So I know they were offering him a little bit more, but I don't think he made that much more than me. 
because I think, um, I forgot how he told me they, oh, that's what it was. He was a company driver, so he had to take the, he didn't have a choice. So if you was on the Northeast as a company, you had to take the light sleeper and then, um, basically because it's smaller to get over there on that side of town or whatever. But if he wanted to run the whole OTR where he did not do only Northeast, then he got the option to take the condo. But he wanted to run the Northeast because he wanted to make more money. I don't remember how much more. But no, they never told me I had to take a sleeper. I was immediately offered the condo. So how long how how long was it before you uh before you left Fern? Because it sounds like you're with a different company. So how how long did you let me well let me rephrase this? I was this. with Fern for a year, but that's so you did because, I, so you um, did so you did do the obligation for for Swift, I mean not Swift, but for Prime paying for your 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 license and everything. You yeah. did the year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you did And um the only reason I left Prime to be honest with you was because Prime tends to send their drivers into the Colorado, what do you call that? The mid the Midwest areas during the brink of the winter. <laughs> and um, in the chain states. I had like yeah, I wasn't really good. Like, well, I won't say I wasn't good. I was just not familiar with winter driving because I was brand new. And what scared me is one day I went up this hill and it was an ice storm in Arkansas and my truck went backwards. Like it was just basically rolling back down the hill. And um, I ended up in a ditch and they, I had called for help. And they was like, oh, we got eight prime drivers already in the ditch. You're going to have to wait. And I remember the security guard, he helped me. He put um he put some rocks and sand under my tires and made me, you know, use the differentials and that's how we got the, the truck out the ditch. But ever since that, it just turned me off to doing it. And then um I guess right when I was thinking about changing and not doing it anymore, um, something happened with my kids where I had to like take a hiatus for a while, like a couple of weeks off. And when I came back to that huge um that huge bill. I was constantly trying to get out of it, like you know what I mean. Yeah, because that uh, <laughs> yeah hard. that that uh, that, tru- that truck that truck payment don't stop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Stuff, that's what they that's what they don't tell you. <laughs> they don't tell you that. <laughs> they they tell you all the good stuff. No, they like, tell you, but they make it sound like yeah, they make it sound like you can make it up. It's not that hard, but it is hard. It's very hard. Yeah, I can and then imagine. when I came back, it was through the slow season. It was real slow, and the lows was getting real. It was it was getting like a little bit bad, and I felt like they did that on purpose. I guess I was paranoid because I was like, "Oh, they doing that on purpose?" Because I left for a little while, and then that's when I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna quit." All right, and all that's right. when I went to. Um, yeah, yeah. So how but how no, so how, long, was, how long you been driving all together? Well, if you add it all up, it's about three years. Okay, okay, okay. So you got you you got some you you got some Motsy behind you. Uh, how long you been with yeah, your I current mean, company? Like I said, I'm just new to YouTube. YouTube. I not I'm not familiar with like making content, but I'm familiar with the trucking industry. I've been following Trucking Brown since he's been out because he went to Prime just like me. He just went a little bit before me. What you asked me just now? I said how long? How I, I said how long you been with your current company? Oh, I've been with Smith six months. I'm kind of new to this company here. And the only reason I came to this company is because, well, it's a long, <clears throat> it's a long story, but I was living in Georgia for a while, and I ended up moving back to my city, New York City, which is where I'm at now. And I planned to move back to Georgia, but I ended up like in, ended up la- landing the Smith company because they're a Northeast company. Okay, so you, so you, so you rather you you rather drive the Northeast? I mean, you you good with that? Because a lot of drivers, such as myself, um, is not a no, fan of driving the Northeast. So it just so happened that I get home, but I'm mostly my account is out of Charlotte, but I do got to go through the North Northeast to pick up the load. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. So I pick up my load, and do you know what calls that New Jersey is? It's real small, so I do have a lot of difficulty getting in and out of that state, like just back in the truck, moving trailers. It's, it's hard, but it builds up my skills so that when I move back to Georgia, it's not 
Like, I could be whipping this truck like it's nothing because of the fact that I learned a lot with, um, driving in the Northeast. You know what I mean? Like, once you're in it, you just, you just do it. But when you're not in it and you somebody tell you about it, you're like, oh, hell no. Or if you're living somewhere else and somebody offered me that account, I'd be like, there's no way you can get me back to the Northeast. But since I don't got no choice, and I just jumped head first, and I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. I'm like, okay, now it's not a big deal because I'm already doing it. You feel what I'm saying? Who is that DJ like that? Ooh, 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 ooh.